Moon, I will talk about a case study on uh, on using uh, uh, the flexibility uh, function Moon has developed in in the Cities project on uh, on a water. Uh, distribution system. Uh, and now we are saying case study, it, it is really a simulation study, but but at least to some extent to towards what is happening in real life. So our starting point was that uh, that to to support the energy system, we, we need some energy storage and many water utilities has water towers as part of their network, meaning that that they have a, a potential energy storage as you move the water into to the air and then you can use that pressure to supply the system afterwards. However, before starting using such a storage, you, you need to, to be very aware that the, the concerns of the utilities is their supply and their water quality and really not the, the stability of the grid. Uh, and this means that, that any controls need to be in hand for the utilities such that they can change it towards what is needed in their system. And, and this always must be the main, be the main priority. Though they are using energy, there are a lot of small uh, uh, systems uh, using uh, small amount of energy. In so, so in some way, we need to be able to bundle all of these uh, energies, energy consumers uh, to a large extent to, to go into the market. Uh, and we need to do that in an efficient way because uh, the, the savings that are, are possible with, uh, with uh, using uh, using the savings uh, from uh, variable energy prices is small compared to what it costs to operate the system. So we have to have an easy to set into uh, to operation system and easy to maintain system. So all of these statements really leads to, a, to a, some kind of system that is automated to, to a great extent. Uh, and as John just talked about our, our, our ICE filed on MPC and uh, and also with this structure with a local set of MPC controllers. So we, we assume that we have local controllers or we have built local controllers at each of, of the of the pumping station and water utilities, which are, are predicting their their system model and their load conditions locally, and then they are controlled globally by a price signal from yet an optimal control that puts bits on the market. And this is the part Rune has developed in, in the cities project. So we have local controllers that uh, are out-tuned uh, and are operating towards the prices that are defined by this uh, dynamic price setting system or scheme that the uh, owner has developed. So this is the setup we are working with. Uh, and then the outline of the presentation is that I will I'll just uh, briefly present the MPC we have used locally that ensures uh, that uh, the utilities has control over the application, uh, how the connections are between, between the, the price scheme and, and the local controllers. Then Rune will talk about his flexibility function and how he has uh, uh, used that to to engage with the electricity market. And then I don't know. Hopefully, he will come to some concluding remarks in the end. So the system we are considering is is uh, like this, where we have a pumping station feeding a lower pressure zone, pressure zone one here in this picture, and feeding a, a water tower, which is our storage. And then we have a second pressure zone uh, feed by by a second pump. And if we are looking at this second pumping station, then if we change anything in this pump station, it would immediately uh, change the conditions in, in, the, in the pressure zone too, means that we have no freedom to, to change any operating condition in that pump, meaning that it cannot be used for, for supporting uh, the electrical grid. Whereas the other one is supplying both the second pressure zone and this water tower, which is really our storage. Uh, so here we have some freedom to do something. And as I said before, the water tower is really our energy storage. However, we also have some constraints uh, because we cannot, of course, not overfill this water tower because the water will run over uh, the streets. Uh, but we cannot empty it too much either because there are some, some requirements uh, for firefighting. So we cannot, uh, there are some lower limits uh, on the water tower. And then, of course, there are some limits on the pumping station. Uh, and then we have some limits on, on water quality. Uh, and, and for a water tower, that really means uh, how is the average age of the water stored in the water tower. So we have to continuously uh, take care of uh, exchanging the water in the water tower to ensure water quality. And then, of course, uh, to be able to 
predict what how we should operate the system, we need to know something about water consumption in the two zones. So we also have to predict that. And now we have written energy cost, but it could as well have been uh, CO2 that uh, was translated into to uh, price signal from uh, from Hune's side. So we have a prediction part. Uh, so here the, here is a simulation uh, with with a, a known noise signal, uh, and the first plot is is the prediction of the consumption in in the lower zone, zone one. The second plot is uh, the uh, consumption in the upper zone, and the last plot is, is the pressure that was provided by the pumping sto station. And these are within the assumptions on the model. So of course we are able to predict that. But we went a step further, and then we took a real signal from a utility. And this is a small utility from Biangbo, and small utilities has a tendency to have a more changing uh, consumption profile because the averaging is smaller because there are fewer houses. Uh, and here again, you can see the top plot, uh, the lower zone, the upper zone, and the pressure. And we still predict it's, it, it's quite well, if, at least uh, well enough that we were uh, going further on to an MPC controller, which is the which operation is shown here where the top plot is the level in the in the water tower uh, an artificial price signal which has this staircase form because then you can understand what's happened and then the flows in the bottom where the blue is the consumption of the lower zone green upper zone and the red one uh, the consumption uh, the pump effort from the or the pump flow from from the pumping station and what we can see is that that, that we have high flow and low prices exactly as, as with, uh, with John's presentation before. And this really means that you can see that the water tower is filled when the price is low and we are uh, discharging the water tower when the price is high. And we see exactly the same, oh, even though it's very hard to follow this when it is, is low and high with the yellow signal, which is the water pump consumption because of prediction is not that good, but it's very clear that we are still filling our storage when the price is low and emptying when the price is high. So we have a tool that is able to, to react on this power signal and still keep, uh, keep the constraints for, for the water utility. Uh, and for this, we, we have used a 24-hour prediction horizon, and we have chosen that because the consumption profile from, uh, from the utilities is is behaving in, in a 24-hour uh, repeated pattern. Uh, but unfortunately, especially with new, uh, new uh, electrical prices coming from, or electrical consumption coming from renewable energy sources, the uh, power prices is, is really changing on the fly, fly. So how to handle that is really what we have considered here. And, and what we have done is, as I started, uh, talking about that we have these local controllers taking care of the requirements from the utilities and then we have a, a grid balancing or a, a way to enter the power market as a global uh, system and this makes it possible that uh, we have several of these local MPCs but these, uh, these aggregated uh, local MPCs means that we have power enough to enter the power market but again we need to figure out how to, to do that in a smart way. And, and here Rune will take over and, and talk about how he uses flexibility function to, to do that. Uh, should I switch off the presentation, Rune, or will you continue here? I think I asked you to do it now. Yes, of course. And we switch to my screen, I think. Yes. Good. Um, so, I see here. So, so uh, now Karsten has explained how this problem looks like from uh, the point of view of someone operating a water tower, someone concerned about the water level, the water tower and fire safety and water quality and all that kind of stuff. But I'm coming from the energy grid point of view, from the electricity grid actually. And for me, I don't know what's going on with this water tower. I don't know anything about pumps about water quality and, and in some sense I really don't care. What matters to me is that there is some energy system and in this energy system I can I can give it prices and then there will be some demand coming out of it. That's all I care about. What happens inside, Carsten can take care of that. So for me, I'm faced with a classic uh, input output problem where I have a price as input, demand as output, and then I want to estimate this relation 
which is what we call the flexibility function. And after I have estimated the flexibility function, I can use this to then, uh, as a retailer, act on the market, buy energy, and then try and make it so that the water tower will consume the energy that I bought so that I don't have too large imbalances. But the first task is to, is to find this relationship between input and output. And in general, we can expect some response looking similar to what I have on the picture here, where if we have some step increase in price, the red line, then we would expect the demand to, after some communication delay or control delay, to decrease at least for a while, and then uh, either go back to normal or perhaps have some rebound effect where it wants to, in this case, maybe fill up the, some extra more than the tower or something like that. But in general, the response we can expect to look like this, and there are a number of parameters here that might be important, like the total amount of energy C that we can move and delta, which is the largest change in demand and so on. So in this study, we have uh, we've modeled this function using stochastic differential equations. And this is the, the full model that I will not cover in detail. I could spend the whole presentation on this, but the, maybe the fundamental structure that makes this work with like in real life with the real the amounts of data that we actually have in real life is that the underlying equation here governing x is some we just consider that for any system you could imagine that there'll be some sort of state of charge in the system which in this case is the how much water is in the water tower and if the, if your demand is d and the and the normal operation is b then the difference between these two will result in a change in the, in the state of charge and this state of charge, we just know has some maximum and some minimum. And then we have some equations describing how we could imagine that changes in the state of charge and changes in electricity price would then affect the final demand. So we went ahead and we fitted all the parameters of this model to the, to the data from Carsten without knowing the details, simply just giving it prices, observing demand, and then fitting all of these parameters. And uh, the result is, is this, where we can see the, the, the real demand from the, from, from, uh, from the water tower in blue and the prediction in black. And we see that actually, at least for the first day, we're actually able to estimate the demand quite accurately. And even two days ahead, we estimate still pretty accurately and even maybe up to four days. So we can actually, even without knowing any details about this water tower, we can pretty much estimate the response to prices. So we have a good model now for the, the expected demand for given prices. We can go ahead and use this. And since this is a work with a real, like with the industrial partner, they're usually interested in, in using this for the current market conditions and not some future, but what we actually have now. So in this case, uh, we looked at what, what can we, what options do we have for the current markets in Denmark? And there's something called flexure orders. And flexure orders consist of some interval, some amount of energy, and the duration. So you can, you can make these flexure orders in the spot market, and what you need to give, for example, could be an interval, like uh, four hours from eight to 12, then how much energy you need in each of these hours, for example, one megawatt hours, and then how many of the hours do you need energy in and then what you would get is that you would get one megawatt of, of energy in the two cheapest hours in this interval. So this way you can actually get the cheapest hours based on the spot price, but you don't get to decide what hours it is, of course. So, so that's, that, that's where they need to use the flexibility function afterwards. Um, so we can go ahead, use these flex orders, buy some energy and then use, then figure out a price so that the water tower will consume the correct amount. So an example is, is here, where if we have uh, the spot price in gray and we have some baseline demand in green, then maybe in, if we could split the, the day into intervals of four hours, so the first four hours, the next four hours, the next four hours, and for each of those hours, buy electricity mainly the two cheapest hours. In that case, we would get the red profile here that would be how much energy we actually bought. But now we have a problem because this energy is not the same as the baseline demand. So what we need to do now is 
you just use the inverse of the flexibility function to figure out what should the price be for the consumers so that their consumption will actually follow the, the energy that we bought. So it would look something like this, where we have the dark gray line as the price, and basically we will send the high price when we don't want them to consume, and the lower price when we want them to consume. And the exact values that we send, they are all computed from the flexibility function. But it, overall, it will look something like this, and you see the equation we solve is just the flexibility function of the price should equal the board energy, solve for the price. That's the basic idea. Um, and when we do this for the water tower, we, we can, we save some money. In this case, we save 4.1%. Uh, and what is interesting is to note that this is actually very close to the maximum potential that we could have with, with perfect foresight. Because if we also went ahead, we went ahead and did the same as what most other researchers do. Most researchers, they just assume that you know the spot price in advance before the whole market, and then they just control based on the spot price. And if you do that, then you could save 5.4%. But that's not, you cannot do that in reality. Reality, you can, you, the closest you can get is using flexi orders, and then you don't know what hours you actually get. And in that case, we can save 4.1%. So we see we're actually very close with this method of, uh, at obtaining the maximum potential. Uh, and this you can actually do today with the current regulations. There's no, nothing has to be changed. We can actually do this today. Um, and I see the, and generally you need to spend a little more energy, but it's not a lot. Even, even though you spend some more, you still, the average price you pay is lower and you can actually save some money. So that was actually the results and uh, the finish of our presentations. Thank you, Rune. Thank you, Carsten. This was very interesting. Um, I will invite the audience, whether there may be any questions or Alternatively, you have been so clear, so there's no need for further clarification. Maybe I have a question, if, uh, if it's okay. Um, yes, you, Henrik. Are, you operate with four hours uh, uh, gap, but, uh, but facing the U.S., and now we can see that our friends from the U.S. are popping in, uh, they have uh, five minute markets. Uh, what are, can you comment upon that? Is that a, a, an advantage or will it be too uh, computational demanding? Or, or In this case, it doesn't matter because in this case, we participate once a day in the spot market. Once a day in the spot market, we use flex orders, we buy some energy and then I calculate the price for the whole day. So in this case, I can also, I can send 24 hours of prices to the water tower. It doesn't even need to be updated. So if this was five minute intervals, I would just have to calculate some more prices, but we only do it once a day. So the computational burden is quite low. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I don't see any problems. But wouldn't it be more interesting, or, or e I think this is very interesting, no, don't, don't misunderstand me, but wouldn't it be interesting to go into the, the, the balancing market, a regulating power market? Yes, but that's very difficult to actually do today. Especially also when you have these NPCs, they they usually want to have 24 hours forecasts. And one of the problems is that uh, at least when you do a study, how can you forecast? Like it's very difficult to forecast the prices that are designed when we don't really know how they will be designed. So it, we have this problem where then Carsten should forecast the prices I make, but then his forecast will depend on my forecast like, on, 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 on the prices I design, and then. I will change how I designed them and he will change the forecast and back and forth. So it's a little bit difficult to actually make that study. But of course, yes, that's how it should be at some point. Yeah, okay, thank you.